What's up, everybody? Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Michael Alexander. Uh, I'm a software developer. I've been doing the uh, writing the code and developing for, for about 10 years now. Um, I'm in the IoT space now. Uh, so I get to be trendy and work with device-to-device uh, -device communication. Uh, so, so far it's been amazing. And I thank you all for uh, just allowing me to, to share my experiences with you. Uh, so, so our talk today is uh, safe, humane environments are major key. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, DJ Khaled, major key, all the things. Um, and a lot of this talk uh, is just about uh, how, how we can be more safe, how uh, we can feel secure in the environments we are, whether at conferences, uh, whether uh, it's, it's on our team, uh, and even just uh, even around the people that uh, make us feel uh, empowered so that we can actually you know, be ourselves. So this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, Hopefully, if it's not yours, hopefully be one of, one of them anyway. It's just that it's, it's a reminder that, uh, you know, the, it's, it's the people behind the technology. You know, uh, this, I, I love and appreciate the craft, but also the people behind it. And that reminds me, it, it reminds me that uh, there's empathy. It should be. Empathy should be involved. Um, I unfortunately missed a talk uh, yesterday about empathy, but I'm so glad that um, empathy is a, a theme uh, for this conference. Um, so I certainly hope that uh, it will continue. Come on, you can do it. So yeah, so why, why do we need empathy? Uh, it's important to build trust you know, through, through, your, through your policy, through your code of conduct. And it's great that to see the reminders of uh, your thoughts, your feelings, uh, they really matter. Uh, because when, you know, for, for the many years that I've been on teams, you know, uh, I'm there for, for my technical expertise. Um, but sometimes uh, many people may not extend the trust uh, that, you'd, that you'd expect, that you'd want you know, to make you feel safe. So, and that's, that's what brings us to, you know, when, when, it, when we talk about diversity. You know, it's, it's all over the place. We've been talking about it for a few years now. Uh, diversity and inclusion and, uh, like, here we, here we go again. And, you know, a big part of what, what brings me here today is because of, you know, has diversity, uh, you know, is it a farce? Um, you know, we're start, I'm starting to see just how the message, how the definitions of diversity and inclusion has been hijacked uh, to where uh, it really, it does not represent a lot of what uh, I see in my world, what other people see. Um, I don't see that, I still to this day don't see many black folks or Latinas or, or trans or black trans. Um, so, when there's this big celebration of diversity, uh, it tends to look like this, right? That's me. I'm that guy, <laughs> right? Um, and for, for other people, that's probably you too, right? You're the only woman there. Uh, you're the only Muslim there. And it's OK to mix that up, right? And really, I mean, if we really want to talk about diversity, sometimes this can be inverted. Diversity can be where there are no white people in the room at all. There can be all it can be an all-trans team doing their thing. It could be a beautiful thing, fierce as hell. So, so what is safe? What is that? What does that look like? Um, the definitions of that, I mean, we think about it as far as physically, but there's so many other ways that we can define it, right? Uh, there's, you know, the 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 mental, the emotional, you know. The, the actual environment that I'm here in, um, you know, if, if I don't feel welcome in that space, regardless of whether someone is physically attacking me, probably not my space, right? I don't belong here. So 
that's part of the things that, oh, I jumped ahead. <laughs> Not just the physical, right? Uh, so, and that's one of the things is that uh, when you, when you want to feel safe in, a, uh, uh, in an environment, on your team, in the organization, you want to be able to talk to anybody, right, on your team. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, technical prowess. It's always, it's also talking about, uh, you know, the thinking, the thoughts and the feelings and the safety behind um, what drives the, the culture, what drives uh, the innovation on your team. So, yeah, I mean, we see it about four to five percent uh, black and Latinos in, in, in the uh, top technical uh, technological organizations, and these are these are uh, organizations that are really that are even opening up their numbers, talking about it. Your Googles and your Apples and, and HP, where for for a lot of us that consume, uh, I mean, take for example Twitter, where I, I believe it's approaching 20 percent of a black user base, but for who actually drives uh, the 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 product development for for Twitter. It's dismal for uh, the representation for leadership of you know for um, for diversity there. So certainly, hopefully, we can do better. Because seriously, <laughs> really, <laughs> you just like nah, <laughs> nah, son. <laughs> That's how I feel. I miss you, Prince. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm shaking my head every time, every time I see this, just, nah. So we hear a lot of successful mantras um, in, in hacker culture. You know, there's get out your comfort zone and disrupt, disrupt all the things, right? Uber for cats, let's do this. Um, you know, break the rules, give it five minutes. Yeah, we're gonna put markup in our behavior, and it's going to be amazing, right? Components. You know, there's, there's, there's so many ideas as far as, you know, you want to break all the rules, right? Except until it comes to hiring. Ah, I don't know. May, might be a bad culture fit, right? Ah, well, I don't know about Daquan. Daquan is, he, you know, he's, he's a little different. You know, so... I think that we can extend a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of our product development, a lot of our thoughts behind being forward, being progressive, not just in our technology, but also uh, in in our circle of people and, and how we are welcoming and opening. And it's wonderful to see how uh, many of you express that. And it's wonderful, you know. I, this is one of the, f I mean, I've been to many conferences. It's the first time I'm speaking at one, and. You know, everyone's been so lovely here, and I appreciate being welcome here because when you, when you open that up, that's when you feel as if you can be yourself. You know, that's when you can start to embrace, so, oh, I'm jumping way ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's when you're jumping way ahead because, you know, there's, there's always, there's always these, these responses of, well, but what about all people, Michael? You know, all lives matter, Michael, right? Just the great dismissive response. You don't see any of these folks come about until when it's time for some silencing, right? All lives matter. And you're just like, really? Word. <laughs> Grace Jones ain't here for it. I'm not either. <laughs> so I think what's most interesting, though, is that um, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to be dismissive of, of the people on our team, right? We want to just engage and understand and, and learn from, from who's there. Because, you know, yet again, all lives matter. <laughs> nah. I mean, we should all acknowledge our differences and be able to embrace them um, because there are layers, right? Um, there's layers on, you know, many of our experiences. You know, because there's, um, you get mixed up. You, you're thrown so many uh, just women of color. What? Non-black people of color. Like, it's, it, gets, it can be dizzying, but it's okay. I mean, we learn new technologies every five minutes. 
there's probably a new JavaScript framework you're gonna have to learn next week. I mean, we already know this, right? So, uh, you know, it's very, very much okay to uh, embrace and talk about uh, the humanity that may not, that may be different from, you know, our experience, my experience, yours. So, so specificity is okay. I mean, you don't have to use a, an umbrella term to talk about Latinas. You don't have to bring this uh, you know, umbrella term to talk about black folks and their, their specific concerns, right? Um, because you know, I, you know, oftentimes I'll encounter where people discuss uh, black issues and then it evolves into people of color. When, when, when you really want to address the concerns of who's really being marginalized, you know, for if, if you're Muslim, if you're really uh, you know, talking about the targeted uh, treatment that they receive, it's not just all people of color that will receive that specific kind of treatment, so that should be addressed. So, so if you really want to, uh, to address those concerns, talk to people, talk to them, ask for input, it's all right. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna bite your head off. It's all right, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, our humanity is non-negotiable. It's, it's not happening. You know, there's, there's uh, you know, a lot of talk of, well, I don't know, I mean, just this code of conduct and you're wanting to inject uh, your blackness into this discussion, um, you know, shouldn't it really be about all people? And, and really, I mean, how can you talk about it really? I mean, at what point is it about, uh, you know, you, you and treading, you, you just, you're, we're losing our free speech, right? Free speech. <laughs> just so that I can say offensive things to you. No, it's not okay, right? <laughs> I want to say whatever I want. Okay, but I'll retaliate and call you out on what it is you actually think and feel because it's offensive, right? So, so yeah, so I mean, I mean the, the creeks and the valleys of, of diversity, of, of technology for, for hiring, uh, for relating to one another, I mean, inter intersectionality is important because, I mean, this, uh, when we talk about diversity, I mean, I'm also just seeing, I mean, this pattern of, well, we have, we're, we're approaching or we're increasing gender equality, you know, uh, we are reaching this, you know, we're, we're addressing this, uh, we're bringing more women into tech, women in tech, right? And, but if, what happens if you're, um, if you're a Latina or you're a First Nation woman? Do you feel as if you're being addressed in that? What if you're a First Nation, uh, you know, uh, intersex? You know, does that really address um, all of these, all of this talk of, um, women in tech, and I'm not, I haven't really seen it, you know, because that's my concern is has, has diversity evolved into just, is it just white women in tech? I mean, we should, you know, be specific on that because we want to address the concerns of, you know, black women as well who are just uh, utterly minimized within technology. You know, you're a black gay man in technology and where do you fall in all of that? So knowing the layers to, to engage on many different spheres is really important so that it doesn't become just very clear, very stark on, on, uh, on just women or on just men. So, so some of the solutions, you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking about uh, safe environments for working, is uh, just evolving the culture and injecting my culture. So uh, I have one of, uh, on my team, uh, you know, it's a third of us are black, which is just a monstrosity. <laughs> it's crazy, it's insane. And when, you, when, when you're able to relate, uh, you know, our, our commit messages, it's, I mean, it can be anything from talking about, it could be about Sade. Our, our unit tests usually have, uh, you know, coming to America references. <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous. 
And you know, that's, that's what you want to do, is you want to involve the culture, inject your culture, and talk about the things that are important to you. Right? I love salt and pepper. Let's do this. <laughs> right? um, you know, these are just you know, ridiculous messages where you just want to bump it up. Right? These are my bump messages. <laughs> you know, so, those, so those are important. Um, because you don't have to, you, when you're in a, uh, a trusting and empathetic organization or culture, team, environment, you're free to be yourself, and that's, is, that is just so empowering. Um, so uh, my, uh, my coworker, uh, essentially my boss, um, despite that we're a flat structured team, uh, you know, I was wondering, you know, hey, why, why haven't we uh, you know, put some Birdman in it? So, so when I went home, uh, he was still at the office. He, hits, he tweets me up, says, you know, put some respect on it. You know, on, on, these, uh, on these here tests, they're probably broken. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I love that, you know, you can feel as if you can be yourself and, and not have to, uh, you know, you say certain things and you're not being mocked. So it's, it's a wonderful, feel, wonderful feeling that you can be yourself. So, yes, better examples. Um, you can provide, um, you know, I, I think of analogies. I think of examples where uh, there's, for example, I mean JavaScript. JavaScript, I, I often think of JavaScript as the, the Drake of programming languages, <laughs> right? The wheelchair Jimmy of languages. I mean, because, I mean, it was what? It was a tender year back then, back in 2007. Um, Who's this dude? Wheelchair Jimmy? Really? Seriously? On Tumblr? Get out of here. You know, he's, oh, he's a, he's a toy rapper. No one's going to take him seriously, right? Boom. Enterprise JavaScript. What's up? <laughs> right? <laughs> What's good? So, you know, I, I love to use uh, analogies like that. You know, just uh, the, maybe we could talk about the, the R&B, the, R&B groups of, of languages. Um, you know, who's, who's, the, who's the in vogue of, you know, who's the in vogue of functional programming languages? Uh, who would be the Keith Sweat of functional programming languages? And once you describe those concepts, once you talk about them, you can evolve those examples to where you can talk about uh, those concepts in different, uh, in different groups of people. I mean, you, I mean imagine just, uh, hooking in uh, homoeconic languages to to love hip hop and love and hip hop in Atlanta, like I mean, these are lots of thoughts that people would not even think about. Real housewives, let's do this. Uh, but I mean, you start to hook into a lot of thinking that a lot of people really wouldn't think about. So this is Willie Ninja. I don't know if y'all know who he is. Willie Ninja is amazing. Madonna learned a lot from him. The world owes him a lot. Uh, you know, this, this is just a reminder that uh, you know, we can all get information. You know, Willie, Willie Ninja, you know, we, uh, he's, he's on uh, Paris is Burning. And you know, he, he taught us a lot about expressing and being, being ourselves. I mean, quite the innovator in, uh, in ball culture, in ballroom culture. So. Um, you know, he's just a reminder that when I'm committing messages, maybe some of us can look like this, and it's all good. <laughs> so I just wanted to come back around to uh, one of my favorite quotes, um, you know, developing empathy, because, you know, it, it's sorely needed. You know, you don't have to compartmentalize uh, our experiences. And I think that's, that's, you know, that's part of the problem, is that we can separate who we are from what we do. Um, I'm OK with the messy. You, know, you don't have to, I don't, I don't leave my blackness at the door, because guess what? It comes everywhere I go. You're going to see it. Now, are people surprised on interviews? I mean, they'll hear me, though, the phone interview, as opposed to when I show up, folks are a little surprised. Yes. But, when you're uh, accepting and you build this uh, empathetic culture uh, through codes of conduct like what, you know, why are we here today, um, you know, it, it's really inspiring 
Um, it's really empowering, and I, I truly appreciate what you all are doing. Um, so uh, thank you. <laughs>